So a little bit about myself. My name is Matt Short. Um, uh, you know, I talked to Jerry about, about speaking, and he, he called me up, and he said that there's going to be a pretty heavy intel bias in the room, but we need someone to kind of shift the, shift the marketplace of ideas and the thought towards embedded systems. And so no one better than that than the people who came from, from Motorola to kind of reacquaint you know, where, we're, where we're at with embedded systems, embedded processors, and things like that. So uh, it can be fun and friendly. Feel free to raise your hand and disrupt me as, as possible. I like controver controversial questions, so I've, I've seen a lot of softballs, kind of think of some hard ones for me. And uh, a little bit about, you know, I'm very new to NXP, uh, only uh, about a month or so into it, but I, uh, before that was at Freescale, and uh, before that was at Motorola. So at least there was a lot of people, there are several people here from Motorola Computer Group, so I feel like I'm kind of at home, uh, despite the Intel, the Intel people here. Um, actually, Intel's not here, that's another story. Um, Anyway, um, so NXP now, Freescale was number one in communications processors, um, number one in RF power, uh, which a lot of people probably use for, for different applications, number one in aut automotive safety and things like that. Uh, NXP and, you know, NXP used to be Philips, Freescale used to be Motorola, um, you know, long history, uh, both companies have kind of a 50 year plus, um, you know, pedigree. And together, I think the, the really exciting thing about the, uh, the merger is that we're the fourth largest semiconductor company. And so it really gives us the scale to, to really play and compete in a certain, in, in a lot of uh, different markets. And what you saw with NXP, um, you know, we, my group, uh, I'm the senior product line manager for a lot of the performance multi-core processors. So anything that's, you know, 10 watts to 35, 40 watts is in my wheelhouse. Uh, I also have a product line of security processors and things like that. And um, you know, together we were number one in communications. We were the first to integrate security into our processors, to integrate trust architecture, things like that. And then with NXP, we get kind of a whole new suite, whole new t toolkit of, of 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 toys to play with. So. Um, you know, thing I didn't know until we got acquired. You know, everyone probably used an NXP or, or a device today when they use their key to get into their hotel room. So the near field communication, things like that, that's all NXP. Um, so together, really a focus on um, security. And so kind of what you see in the new company is, okay, there's, there's, a, fo there's, a, there's a very fo big, huge focus. We've talked about IoT today on everything being connected, um, things being intelligent and things being secure. Um, from the digital networking perspective, we really like that because we've been doing that for a long time. Um, I actually co-lead the um, multi-core for aviation working group as well that Freescale started. My previous colleague, Glenn Beck, which some of y'all might know, um, I think he's probably been to the conference before. Um, you know, so I, I took over leading that. And we, I showed this slide uh, at the most recent uh, meeting. You know the the world's now talking about secure and in, you know secure and connect security and connectivity, and I'm like we we've, we've been doing that for a long time. PowerQuick One, which was the first you know device you know with Ethernet, you know in 1995. That was 20 plus years ago. We've been doing Ethernet for a long time. In fact, one of my old bosses, a guy named Lloyd Hazley, wrote the 802.3 spec. Um, so Motorola has a lot of Motorola Freescale has a lot of history there. Same thing 15 years ago. Um, this is from EE Times, an, an interesting announcement. You know, we, we were, were the first to integrate, um, uh, or first to come out with a series of, of security products, you know, for the IPsec, which was breakthrough, mind-blowing at the time. So we've been doing secure uh, communications for a long time, and I think we're well positioned in kind of the, the new world order of NXP to kind of be become a leader. And what we kind of see in the, in the new company is, you know, there's, the, there's an IoT group, there's microcontroller groups, there's automotive group, there's home health, all of these, these, you know, your home is becoming a network, your car is becoming a network. Um, and so really being able to, to lead the company uh, with, with uh, our history of, of the marketplace. Um, you know, one of the things I really at least wanted, the messages wanted in part was we really focus on embedded technologies. So, um, you know, technology leadership, we took the initiative years ago to help in safety certification for multi-core devices. There was, a, there was a recognition and an understanding that, that it's not, not easy stuff. And so we started the MCFA working group. Um, there's also a 
trust architecture users group um, that uh, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, security is multifaceted. One of them is kind of this idea of a trust architecture of a secure boot embedded into your devices. And we feel that's really important. So not only did we integrate it years ago across every product that we bring to market, um, but we also also started a, a, a users group to help people um, use our technology, to help people through the certifications. And yes, you know, we talked about this, our, our RNG has gone through common criteria testing and NSA certification, you know, NSA review and NIST review and things like that. It's, it's, it has good entropy. Um, and then we're also part of a secure, trustworthy, assured, and resilient semiconductor and systems group um, that we, we help sponsor and lead. So, you know, really a, a commitment to helping people use our products in an embedded system. And I think that's a real differentiator for us um, and really one of the reasons I thank you for being able to be here. Product longevity, I often say this is a minimum spec for us and a, and a maximum spec for others. Um, you know, we have a, pr uh, a commitment to 15 year life on all of our devices. So we just came out with you know, a series of 28 nanometer devices, both for PowerPC and ARM, and they're all on our 15 year commitment. Um, and you know, we're really, like I said, it's, it's definitely a minimum spec for us, I think that that we still ship 68Ks and, and things like that. We don't offer that just for one SKU, it's across our portfolio, which is really compelling for these type of, of embedded applications. Um, a very real embedded system design focus. So, you know, we talk a lot in the multi-core for aviation working group about deterministic interconnect and really providing, um, you know, you know, an interconnect that, that has proven latency in a multi-core environment and doesn't throttle back your system. And it's really designed for deterministic real-time at, at, at the get-go. Really big focus on minimizing our soft error rate, our fit testing, alpha particle emission rate, things like that. We were just in Los Alamos doing, you know, testing on all of that, neutron testing, which few semiconductors companies even rarely talk about. Um, and then same thing, lar large temperature ranges for embedded products is really something we do across the board. I was talking at lunch, one of the things we do, we provide integrated security, but we also offer you know, a fusible option so you can turn it off if you don't want to go through the you know, FIPS or whatever equivalent you know, paperwork. So we really make it, try to make it easy for our devices to be used in these types of systems. Um, and then we'll get into a little bit security, security, and even more security. So. Um, you know, a little bit about our, you know, trends in processing that we're seeing. Um, this is actually, I think, a very interesting one. We're really balancing our investments and our strategy in the market for both PowerPC, where we've been a leader for, you know, years and years and years with um, ARM processors. We've actually, um, you know, ARM's relatively new to this space, but we've been doing ARM-based processors for over 10 years. Um, you know, we have, you know, it's really leading. I think the interesting thing about ARM is, you know, you look back five years ago when we talked to A7s, you know, and that was kind of a small little cute, you know, ARM device. And now we're talking about A72, which is, you know, microserver class um, performance. They've come a long way in the last five years. Um, and I think that, that we'll see that, you know, ARM really gives an opportunity in the market for innovation. Um, and it allows us to do investments in other areas that are complementary towards a more complete solution. And it also gives, you know, the, the end user gives y'all the ability to differentiate. Um, you know, it's a, we talked about open standards, the fact that it's an open architecture, that you're gonna have, you know, a, a stable supply from multiple different vendors versus one company, which was, you know, really the case for a couple companies, even with MIPS and PowerPC, um, really opens up um, the ability to, to make an investment and know that that, that investment is going to pay a return for a long time. So I think ARM's really, you know, going to be an interesting player for that. Um, not going to get into a lot of product detail. Um, one of the things that's most compelling about this uh, slide is we, whenever we have a roadmap of devices, we just want to make sure that that we have these green bars. So we want to be able to have pin compatible solutions from the high end to the low end. So uh, that's something we think about from the outset of our architecture. Um, and so, you know, with PowerPC, our 28 nanometer, you can go from a single core device all the way up to an eight core device in the same package. And then you can go from eight all the way to, to 24 cores in another package. So, you know, this is something that's a real value for 
um, you know, embedded vendors. They want to be able to make an investment. You're not talking about, you know, doing millions of units. You want to be able to do one and then, and then scale that investment very easily. And that's, that's super important for our base. And like everyone, you know, we do plenty of, we do 24 core devices. Um, we do, you know, lots of 10 gig interfaces. We have 10 gig interfaces even down here at the little ones. Um, and we go from, you know, this is a sub three watt part all the way up to, you know, 35, 40 watt range. So a real scale of our, of our product line. Um, on, as far as the aviation side, um, we just got done uh, with our, certification for all of our T-series devices. Uh, and that, um, we did the certification re review um, on the, the end of December. And so we'll have that report coming out um, in a couple of months from, from the F MCFA working group. Um, similar, we're building our story. Same, same thing on the, uh, the ARM side. We go from you know, low end uh, devices that are very, very small all the way up to, this is a, you know, eight core device with A57s and A72s that has, you know, 100 gigs of, of networking I.O. It has, you know, 20 gigs of IPsec SSL type offload, things like that. So a very, you know, complete SOC, um, you know, for, for embedded applications. Quick note, you know, one of the things about security that we, that's always interesting is if you do it bad, it ends up on the news. Um, and these are kind of, you know, the, the biggest fear I think about security that a lot of people have is that it gets hacked somehow. Um, and so we've seen that, you know, recently at, you know, uh, DEF CON 15, the attack on the, uh, the telematics OnStar system, things like that. Um, point of sale, Target. Uh, Target got everybody's, I don't know who had to get a new credit card because of the Target or Home Depot things in the last couple of uh, years. I have had both of those, not a lot of fun. Um, you know, and with everything becoming IoT connected, there's also a huge number of vulnerabilities. And so a lot of the, the, the when you do it bad, it, it gets pointed out. And so, you know, what we see though is that, that at, you know, in, in a lot of these types of systems, you know, there was just not security in those systems. So, you know, you have to think about um, how you're going to implement security across the board. And I think one thing that, we're especially proud of in our portfolio is, you know, we, we integrated security 15 years ago as far as offload. And that's, you know, kind of the first, you know, first guy up here. And do you have offload for, for encryption? Yep, check. Um, you know, five years ago plus we made the decision that up and, up and down our portfolio, we were gonna add trust architecture. We were gonna add secure debug. We were going to add, you know, the additional layers you know, even though the market was just thinking about it, it, we didn't. We wanted to be ahead of it because we knew it, it takes a while for the community to develop. And so, you know, we. You know, that's why we started the users group. That's why we. You know, we have trust architecture. That's how, why we have all of these things because, eventually, in your systems that take a long time to develop, that need is going to be there, and it's going to be there. You know, we feel in a very short amount of time, something's going to get hacked, and then you're going to say, "Oh, oh, crap." But luckily, we had, you know, with, with Freescale, we, we got you covered. And I think, you know, really no one, or NXP, sorry, first slip. Uh, uh, my bad. Uh, so point being, we're helping to drive the community on the security side. So, you know, I think you know, if, that's, if that's important, then that's a real reason to consider, um, you know, this type of, uh, of infrastructure. Um, where are we going in the future? A uh, couple of things that are coming down the pipe. So, you know, obviously, um, you have interfaces and you have general purpose compute. We kind of feel that there's a middle level. Um, so we've had data path architectures. You know, one of the things we talk about is you need to transport, you know, analyze, secure, transport, secure, analyze, and store the, the internet of things or the data. And so we want to make sure that our SOCs all have all of those types of components. So, you know, on the transport side, we've got tons of interfaces and, and what we kind of saw, it's an interesting chart, was that you know, we, we can add interfaces actually these days really, really cheap. Interfaces are becoming ubiquitous. You know, PowerQuick 3, a couple, you know, 45 nanometer, you know, we were excited to add a gigabit interfaces. And then, you know, we kind of moved on to 45, where we, we got 10 gig interfaces and that, you know, 40 gig interfaces. And now we can put our, you know, my newest device, it has 
100 plus gigabits of, of, of interface. But what you saw was you can't scale, the, say, the memory technology. You can't, you can't put the memory, you can't put the, the, the number of GP, GPU cores to scale. You just can't scale, solve the problem from a power perspective. Um, so, so we know that we needed um, a fair amount of offload and kind of a next generation data path in order to kind of keep up, to, 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 do a, to be able to do um, you know, programmable transforms on data in flight. Uh, and so we, we have invested on and now we're sampling kind of our next generation, what we call our data path two architecture um, that we think is gonna be a really unique architecture for the next many years. Uh, and especially in types of you know, aviation applications, there's, I've been talking to a lot of customers who, who see the opportunity here. It's tightly coupled with our offload and it can do kind of a 40 gig data path uh, in an incredibly low power envelope. And so what we generally see is it provides four to six X performance, so overdoing a task in kind of a layer two, layer three, layer four type task, um, it, four to six X performance of general purpose cores. Um, and it's also you know, C programmable. It's not a micro architecture. It's totally within the customer's control. And so the industry's really been asking for, for a toy like this that can be used. You know, you know, we, we, we have accelerators for the crypto, but it can do inline IPsec, which is very important. You know, we talk about having storage offload, decompression hardware, great. But it can also do you know, Rocky. It can do NVMe, MVMF. It can do those types of of packet transforms, which are very, very compelling. Um, and if you look at the, the marketplace, you know, things are you know, becoming virtualized and, and things like that, but you still need to be able to do certain type functions very, very fast. And that, this provides um, us a, a tool to be able to do that, which, which we know is really compelling in, into the market. So something to look forward to. And then kind of a parting thought on where I think you know, NXP is super well positioned is, you know, we've been a long time leader in fly-by-wire type applications. Uh, and I see, you know, what we're seeing is there's really becoming a need uh, and a transition to this whole concept of drive-by-wire. And, you know, maybe, maybe cars won't be driving us like the, the Jetsons or something like that, but they'll definitely be, you know, assisting us in backing up and parking and doing things. So, you know, and when you look at what is the next generation car really look like. Um, that's something where it's one, it's, it's going to look much more like a, a whole heck of a lot of compute um, to, to, to take all of that data from those sensors and real time uh, um, absorb that information than, you know, today the, you know, we do tons of engine controllers. It's going to look more like a server than it does an engine controller. Um, there's going to be a comms gateway that's an all-in-one, that's gonna be protecting it. Your, your car is gonna have a firewall in the future. Um, and, and so what we see is that we're really helping also to lead the development of this kind of, uh, of, a, of, a, of an architecture. And we think it's compelling for the aviation side because it's gonna have a whole lot of compute. Um, because it's automotive, it's gonna have almost still safety certified quality which you know, the aviation guys have been asking us for that for a long time in kind of this core IQ land. Um, and so, and it's gonna have tons of ability to interface to, you know, whether it's fast peripherals or analog sensors and things like that. And so, you know, this is an area where we think that NXP, you know, is the company that's well positioned for the future. And we think that this will have a lot of applications in uh, aviation uh, as well. So something else to look forward to as we, as we move forward. So in summary, um, we can go to questions, comments, cheers, jeers, rebuttals here in a second. But um, you know, we are the, represent the high performance multi-core solutions that transport, analyze, and secure the data from the edge of the network to the, to the, to the cloud. Um, you know, we're a balanced architecture, you know, multi-core processing, optimized for scalability, we have the interfaces, we have the offload for the key applications, deterministic performance for real-time applications, which is hugely important uh, in these types of systems, proven, proven, proven security architecture, and then I think uh, you know, longevity as a trusted supply, longevity and we're trusted supplier coming back to Motorola. So um, that's what we're about. <laughs>